beautiful weirdo Charlotte here welcome back to Pretty Scary and today marks a big milestone for my channel because it's the first time I'm using a product that has been sent to me by a company who recognized my work so I will be using these lovely black mini sclera contacts from the lovely team at coloredcontacts.com now I really did make my day when I got the email from them because it's just so amazing to actually have my work recognized um, now I just want to mention that these are very safe lenses it's a very good company it's all FDA approved I've been wearing contact lenses since I was 12 years old so I'm used to wearing them and I know all the safety and everything else if you're not used to wearing contact lenses or you've never worn them before it's always best to check with an optician make sure you're safe because you've only got one pair of eyes. I also want to mention that today is a collab with a lovely lady called Emma who is a very talented makeup artist I've been chatting to on Instagram and Facebook so I will link her Instagram somewhere around here or down below and we are doing a Zach Dunn collab. Zach Dunn is an incredible artist. Check him out if you haven't heard of him. Here is the look I've chosen. Anyway after those three shout outs I am going to get straight on and start the makeup. So as with most face painting looks, you want to start by sketching out the rough areas that you want to paint and detail. So I am using a reference picture, obviously, and you'll notice that I keep looking back at my reference picture a lot during this tutorial. And I'm just roughly sketching in the basic features of the scary woman that I am emulating. Don't be afraid to correct this if it goes wrong at this stage you have nothing to lose because there's nothing else on your face so clean it off as often as you need to and just make sure you're happy with it before you go on to the painting stage because there's nothing more annoying than going really wrong once you've done loads of painting. my brows too but I just zoomed through that because yeah you've seen me do it a million times I am thinking about doing a short series called quickies which will be basically covering little sort of short skills such as blocking out your eyebrows and that kind of thing so look out for that right so just painting my face white using just a stippling motion with a sponge so it's not a solid white because I want to look kind of grungy and then just stippling over that with some tan brown face paint to grunge it up a little bit more and then some grey face paint for exactly the same reason. Make sure you lay a towel down in your lap just in case any paints drip because it doesn't always wash out of clothes I found out recently after I got a load of it on a nice pink towel of mine. Anyway, going back in with some red face paint, water-based face paints, these all are, and just colouring in that open gaping mouth. And then drawing in the teeth before I go in with some white and just paint the whole teeth area white. I'll be painting in the gums later on. next step is to paint that nice big gaping mouth black. Now I always think when doing a look like this it's always good to get the really dark areas if you can in like this because it kind of gives you a focal point and an anchor point for the rest of the look. It kind of shows you where the look's going. Now I'm taking a sponge and just blending that black into the red and then taking a fine stiff brush, this is just a lip brush, and painting in those black cracks, the, tra the cracks basically that you drew in when you first did the look with the pencil. Again this will give you a focal point and you'll be able to see where the look's going and do all the shading around these main focal dark areas focal points rather than not focal dark areas, that's not even a thing. Mm. 
and now I'm just painting in the teeth shape. Now it took me quite a while to get the teeth right as you will see later on, I, I kept adjusting but don't be afraid to adjust as you go and especially when you're doing light onto dark you can always add more dark around the edges to adjust what you're doing. You can also even put light over dark so don't panic too much and don't worry if you make a mistake because everything can be rectified. Now I'm just taking that red again and painting some up the sides of the mouth and then realising that actually the red will not go over the black despite what I just said about light colours are going over dark. The red just didn't seem to want to so I just took a baby wipe, dabbed, dabbed away some of the black and then went back over with that red. See? Simple. Baby wipes are your best friend when you're doing any kind of makeup but particularly a face painting makeup like this because they will clean up any mistake. So just intensifying that red down the throat, now that I've got the black in I can see exactly where that red needs to be. And then going in with Margot, my favourite Laura Mercier shade, for those of you who watch my videos regularly you will know that it is. And you will also see that it's starting to get down to the pan so I'm going to need some new Margot soon. And yeah, so basically just using a fluffy brush and just putting that Margot and also a deeper grey around the eye sockets to make them look nice and hollow and skull like and the same around the cheekbones so this is just a very extreme version of contouring so yeah those are the shades I'm using there again just keep looking back at your reference picture and making sure you're mimicking that as closely as possible make sure you blend these shadows out really nicely and I'm also putting some of that dark shadow around the top I'm using a flat brush for that because I don't want it to look too blended and soft. I actually want it to look quite kind of PC and grungy and yeah. And then over all of those black lines I'm blending the same grey shadows just to soften those up and make them look more like indentations rather than just black lines painted on the face. Remember with a look like this you are copying a painting so you want to look like a painting and you don't want this to look too hyper realistic, you want to look like you've been painted. Creating some more texture there with Margot and then mixing a grey and a black together and just wiping most of it off the brush ready to start drawing in the kind of the cracks and crevices in the skin, this gnarly sort of witchy lady's skin painting them in and then blending out with a sponge and then I'm painting in the gums. I decided to do the gums grey because that's how they looked in the picture. Going down the neck with that same gnarly texture. I haven't used the word gnarly for a while but it's normally one of my favourite words to use when I'm narrating videos. Just going in with some yellow to add a bit more dimension and colour because it's looking a little bit too monochrome apart from that red. And then mixing some of that red with that yellow and grey and white that I already have on the back of my hand because I always use my hand as a palette, you may have noticed, it's a good palette. And just going over all those cracks because they're kind of like cuts so you kind of want them to look kind of red and irritated and will I ever stop using the words kind of in my videos. I'm going to have a kind of box that I have to put a pound into every time I say kind of. Right, I'm going to endeavour not to say it for the rest of the video. If you catch me saying it, comment down below. Anyway, I'm going in with some black in a kind of, I've just said kind of, haven't I? <laughs> oh god, I've failed at the first hurdle. Right, I'm going in with some black in a speckled emotion to create the kind of, I've said it again. <laughs> right, I've seriously got a problem, Bukes. Seriously. I'm going in with black and red to create a speckled look, which emulates the look on the painting. It looks like really want to say kind of now, I've got to think of something else to say. It looks like chewed up flesh basically. And then I'm going back in with some more shading on all those areas to deepen them up even more and around the teeth to add a little bit of realism and stop them looking so flat. And now I'm going in with my 
NYX Jumbo Milk Pencil. I've seen so many of the YouTubers use this, so I wanted to get it for myself. Didn't really know what I was going to use it for, but I wanted one. So here I am using it for the first time to create the lighter areas in amongst that gnarly flesh. You can also use a white face paint if you don't have the NYX Jumbo Pencil. That's fine too. And also going over those beaded flesh areas. Now a quick tip, just wipe it off on the back of your hand if it starts to get a build up of the other colours so that you're getting a nice clean white out of it. Now I'm going in with a black liquid liner to line around all the teeth and also to line around those cracks in the skin. This really brings those areas to life and stops the look looking too muddy because it is very easy when you're creating a look like this to make it look muddy and for all the colours to blend together. So it's your dark areas and your highlights that will really, really stop that happening. So make sure your darks are really crisp and your highlights are really crisp. And then going in with a brush to create some slightly softer black areas with black face paint. Again, in with deep night and the dark grey just to deepen up those shadows even more. Hey beauty, I've gone a few minutes without saying kind of. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Just keep shading until you're happy, keep looking back at your reference picture. I was looking at my camera monitor which gave me a good idea of how this look looked. A better idea even than it in the mirror, which sounds odd. But as you won't have a camera monitor necessarily while you're doing this, you can get the same effect by taking a picture on your cell phone, mobile phone, depending on whether you're from America or the UK. Anyway, I am going in with a NYX white liquid liner to create some really bright highlights along those cracks and on the teeth and on that gnarly knobbly flesh in the gaping open mouth. And this will really bring it to life. Make sure you clean between dips because you don't want to get those darker colours into your white liquid liner and contaminate it with dark shades. But you don't want that, do you? No. Now you can see how these pops of white are really, really bringing this to life now. You can see what I mean now about those really intense darks and really intense brights being the ones that bring your look to life and stop it looking muddy. Just a quick snack break because this paint, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. This paint was taking a while, so I just needed something to eat and something to drink. And back to my white highlighting. Again, I was determined I wanted this item from NYX. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to use it for, but yeah, turns out it's perfect for highlighting face painting locks. So, yeah. And the final touch is to take my hair out and to mix up an old paint palette, face paint palette. And with some water and just sponge that onto my hair to make it look all dead and witchy. This is the finished look. I hope you like it, complete with creepy contact lenses. Thank you again to coloredcontacts.com. And if you did enjoy this video, then please give it a massive thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, then why not? Hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of all this kind of creepy content that I produce. Anyway, all that remains to say is thank you so much for watching and I love you all and I shall see you next time.